So good afternoon all. I hope you can able to understand the antimicrobial drugs and the food supplements what you are going to add in your KBC in everyday life. After that we are having cleansing agents. We are going to make certain use of things, the chemicals only obviously in order to clean our clothes, our body, our surfaces what you are having. They are all comes under cleansing agents. The chemical substances which are going to remove the dust which is present on the surfaces are called as cleansing agent. So these cleansing agents are of two types. We are going to call them as soaps and detergents. Detergents are also called as soap plus detergents. We can call it as Soap plus detergents. What are soaps? What are detergents? The soaps are nothing but sodium or potassium salt of long chain fatty acids. What they are? Sodium or potassium salts of long chain fatty acids. They are called as soaps. Sodium or potassium salts of long chain fatty acids are called as soaps and they are going to be called as soapy detergents. They are going to be called as soapy detergents. These are called as soapless detergents. They are called as soapy detergents. That is what we are going to call simply detergents and soaps. What are detergents? which are not having soap in them. The cleansing action is not going to have the soap in them. That is going to be called as detergents. They are also going to be made up of some anionic parts to be there and some positive part is there. So we are going to have generally the two types. That is sulfonic acids. We are having a negatively charged anion. And for that one we are going to have a potion or chlorides or acetates we are going to take. For them, we are going to add sodium salts or potassium salts are going to be called as detergents. That's what we are having the difficulty the soaps and detergents. Here what you can get? We can able to get a cation of hydrocarbon. Along with anion fidelity, sulfonates. Or you are having chloride or bromide, or you are going to get alcohol also. So, we are discussing this detergent separately that we can able to see all the things what is going to be happening here. The detergents are nothing but cations of hydrocarbons we are going to take. Along with that, we are going to have a salt which is going to be formed anionic part, SO3 minus CL minus BR minus. Are acetates, or even some alcohols we are going to take, or glycols we are going to take, they are all together will be comprised of detergents. These are the chemical substances we are going to use in case of detergents. These are the chemical substances where we are having sodium or potassium salt of long chain fatty acids are called as soaps. So now we can see the soap, what we are going to have the different ones. How we are going to prepare the soap? Or you say it's a long chain fatty acid. How we are going to prepare the soap? It's going to be saponification. It's going to be saponification. What is saponification? The formation of soap is nothing but saponification. We are going to cause. So you can take usually what is this one? Glycerol. This is called as glycerol, and this glycerol is going to form an ester with acid. Usually you can have stearic acid or pantic acid. Stearic acid means it is going to be comprising of total 18 carbon. CH2, 16 COOH is called as stearic acid. 
Formatic acid is of 16 carbon. It's called as formatic acid. Is going to be stearic acid. Is going to be palmitic acid. We can take any of them for making your ester with your glycerol. Say, for example, I take a nice tearate. That is, this OH is going to be joined with ester is going to be RCOR. We are having OH and H will be going out. So CH2 16 times CH3 CO. CH2 16 times CH3 and here also same thing CO CH2 16 times CH3 so this is called as tristearate sodium uh, sorry stearic acid is going to form this right is called as tristearate now this tristearate is going to be heated with Sodium hydroxide. It is going to be heated with sodium hydroxide. What we are going to get? This entire thing is going to hydrolyze. We are going to get CH2OH, CH2OH, CH2OH. So along with this one, I am going to get CH3, CH2, 16 times. COO and A. I am going to get COO and A. Three molecules I am going to get. It is called glycerol. This is called so. Sodium part of stearic acid can be called as so. So now when we are going to take the soap is sodium salt of carboxylic acid that is stearic acid we are taking here and when we are going to take the glycerol now how we are going to get this one so this is going to be present in colloidal form actually this is going to be present in colloidal form so now we will add NaCl to this one so that the soap is going to be get settled down the soap is going to be get settled down when the colloidal soap is going to be treated with NaCl sodium chloride I think you know that the percolation is going to take place whenever you are adding an electrolyte to your colloid. Now the soap colloid is going to get added up with NaCl sodium chloride. So that's why the soap colloid and soap is going to be get sedimented. Then we are going to collect that soap and we are going to mold it to a dark different shapes we are going to have. Now in the remaining solution we are going to have glycerol. In the remaining solution we are going to have glycerol. So this can be separated or purified by using the technique called fractional distillation. We are going to use the technique fractional distillation. This fractional distillation can able to make the glycerol to get uptime. But we are going to purify this one by using vacuum distillation. We are going to use vacuum distillation. What is it? Vacuum distillation? Vacuum distillation is nothing but the distillation under reduced pressure. The distillation under reduced pressure is going to be called as the vacuum distillation or distillation under reduced pressure. When we are going to take the distillation, what it means? The distillation is nothing but the liquids are going to be get separated based on their boiling points. What is distillation? The liquids of mixer are going to be get separated based on their boiling point. What is going to be get boiled first, which is having the low boiling point that will be boiled first and that is vaporized and it will be coming out first. Then we are going to condense that one that is going to be first liquid. Second liquid, second time it is going to come. So like that we can able to separate by using the technique distillation. In that we are having vacuum distillation. Say for example glycerol is not stable up to its boiling point. If you want to separate this point, this compound should be get boiled. But when you are going to take glycerol, before its boiling point only, it is going to be get decomposed. That's why we are not able to obtain by using the distillation technique. That's why we are going to use vacuum distillation. Normally the distillation is going to be taking place at one atmospheric pressure. 
at one atmospheric pressure it is going to be conducted but now vacuum distillation are under reduced pressure the distillation is going to be conducted below one atmospheric pressure so as it is below one atmospheric pressure that is going to be reaching its boiling point what is the boiling point definition the temperature at which the vapor pressure of the liquid is equal to atmospheric pressure now the vapor pressure is going to be equal it requires some example 260 degrees celsius if i am making the one atmospheric pressure to reduce to some 0.5 now before it's 280 degrees celsius only the vapor pressure will be reached so that the glycerol before its boiling point only is going to be get vaporized so that it is not getting decomposed that's why i am supposed to remember this is very important vacuum distillation is going to be useful for purification of the glycerol so purification of glycerol is going to be done by using vacuum distillation is going to be used by vacuum distillation so this is called soap spent light after getting the soap the remaining solution is called as spent light from the spent light we are going to purify the glycerol by using vacuum distillation understand so this is the technique we are going to use and sodium salt of long chain fatty acid and we can able to use instead of sodium we can able to use KOH also if I am using KOH I am going to get CH3 CH2 16 times COOK so now it is also soap but this is going to be called as soft soap and this is going to be called as hard soap so texture when you are going to consider the potassium salt of long chain fatty acid is going to be soft texture and this is going to have hard texture so that it is going to be called as soft soap it is going to be called as hard soap and the hard soap is going to be useful for the normal purpose we can't use them because of their hardness whereas soft soap is going to be toilet soap what we are using for bathing and all it is going to be potassium salt of long chain fatty acid for this acid if we are going to use the good oils or good fat then we are going to get a toilet soap and if we are going to use some uh, what you can say the scouring ones when we are going to have some uh, impurities containing oils or some other than those oils when you are going to have raw oils are going to be useful for preparation of hot soap and one more doubt we are having here is always when we are going to discuss sodium or potassium salt of long chain fatty acids are only called as soaps why not the others like calcium or magnesium we are having so many other metals why not the other metal soaps we can prepare why only the KOH and NOH why not the others why not the others why can't we prepare the other salts it is because if you are taking sodium or potassium salt of carboxylic acid they are going to be soluble in water they are going to be soluble in water that's why they can able to make that particular solution soapy and they can able to clean the dirt what they are having but we are taking calcium or magnesium salts of fatty acids they are going to be insoluble they are going to be insoluble they are not going to make any dirt cleaning that is why always we are going to take either sodium salt or potassium salt of carboxylic acids as a soap understand so this is about your soap preparation we are having soap preparation now when we are going to take the soap how many different soaps we are having we are going to have many different soaps are there what are the different soaps we are having already discussed about the toilet soaps that is which is used for bathing which is used for bathing toilet soap how we can able to get the toilet soaps already i said the toilet soaps are nothing but there will be sodium or potassium salt in that we are going to add potassium salts majorly and 
we are going to add some attributes. Whatever the soap we are going to take, that is basically potassium salt or carboxylic acid only. But when we are going to take the different brands they are having, Lux, Santur, Vitamix, whatever we are going to follow, they are all going to be added flowers for them, perfumes they are going to add, that's why they are going to be making the different fragrance they are going to get because of perfume whatever we are going to add. So this is toilet soaps. Then we are having medicinal soaps. We are having medicinal soaps. What are medicinal soaps? The medicated. So whatever we are going to add. Commonly the bicanal is going to be added for a soap which is going to be giving you the antiseptic property. Whatever the microbes we are having, that microbes can be cleaned by bicanal which is added to the soap. And other than this one, what are the medication you want? That is, some are going to be get drying of the skin. So that they are going to require antioxidant to be added. So vitamin E is going to be added naturally. Otherwise, whatever the medication, the requirement based the medicated soaps can be prepared. We can able to get by adding a suitable medicinal value. We are going to get transparent soaps. The next one is transparent soaps. How are you going to get transparent soap? I think you all know transparent means glycerin. We are going to use usually. And after the preparation of soap, that is going to be dissolved in alcohol. It is going to be dissolved in alcohol, then it is excess solvent is dried up. That's why we are going to get transparent soap. How the transparent soap is going to be prepared? The soap is going to be dissolved in alcohol, excess alcohol, and after dissolving it in excess alcohol, the solvent extra whether it is there, it is going to be dried. Thus, obtained soap is going to be called as transparent soap. Mostly we can able to use in winter season the transparent soap. The transparent soap is going to consider alcohol glycerol. Glycerol added, we are going to be calling them. Then we are going to have shaving soaps. So compared to the normal soap, the shaving soap is going to give more lather. This lather is going to be because of the adding a drop called rosin. So this rosin is going to be reacting with the soap and is going to be forming. Sodium resonate. Sodium rosinate. The sodium rosinate which is formed is going to cause more lather because of that one. We are going to have shaving soap is going to create a more lather for us. It's going to create more lather for us. And then floating soaps. How we are going to get floating soap? So floating soap is nothing but in swimming top baths. Swimming tubs we are having in that they are going to keep that foaming only. So that floating soap is nothing but whenever the soap is going to be get hardening, then the bubbles which are formed are going to be get beaded. The bubbles are get beaded so that we are going to get floating soap. And then we are having lottery soap. Laundry soaps. How are you going to get laundry soaps? The laundry soaps are going to be prepared by adding the fillers. By adding the fillers like sodium carbonate, borax, sodium rosinate. They are all going to be added as a fillers so that we are going to get laundry soap. And we are supposed to know certain things from this soaps part. What it is? Sodium or potassium salt of long chain fatty acids are called as soaps. Sodium salts are called as hard soap. Potassium salts are called soft soap. Calcium and magnesium soaps will not be there because of they are not going to be soluble. And next one we are having shaving soaps are going to be have a rosin which is going to be making the latter to form more. And they are going to be added up to the glycerol. The glycerol is going to be preventing the drying faster. The glycerol is going to stabilize the foam. That is not going to be allowing the immediately is going to be get dried up. The soap which is kept on our skin, 
normal soap is going to be get dried up after some time. But when you are applying the soap, that is shaving foams, that shaving foams are not going to have easily are getting dried up. It is because of glycerol is added that is going to be preventing the fast drying of uh, foam. And next we are having how we are going to prepare the transparent soap. It is going to be prepared by dissolving it in alcohol so that we are going to get a transparent soap. And we are going to have the laundry soap is going to have the fillers called NADCO3 and borax. And we are going to have builders. What are the builders? For any soap or any detergent we are going to take in order to interact the particular surface, it will take some time. So why? Because it has to form missiles and then it is going to be get into react, then it is going to be take out the duct. So that builders are going to be making the time so fast. We are going to make the time so fast the builders. So that is what we are having the builders in case of soap we are having and medical soap they say medicinated or medicated. The soap that we have medicated are called as medicinal soaps. Whatever the medicinal value we want we are going to add up so that we are going to get some medicinal value for that soap. That's it we are having and builders example you can say uh, trisodium phosphate. Trisodium phosphate can be used as builder which is going to be making the interaction time more. Interaction time more. And this is about your soap. What a disadvantage we are having with soap? The soap is suitable for the water so that it is not going to have any calcium or magnesium. But when you are going to take hard water, that hard water is going to be consisting of magnesium and calcium salts. It is going to be consisting of calcium or magnesium is present in a soap. So now these are going to be reacting with your soap. CH3, CH2, 16 times COO, NA for example. So two times they are going to have. So CH3, CH2, So this is going to be scum. So whenever we are going to have hard soap, hard water, hard water is going to be consisting of calcium or magnesium. So this calcium or magnesium is going to be reacting with your sodium salt of fatty acid and so that it is going to be forming the calcium salt of fatty acid, so which we are going to call them as scum. So that scum is going to be get binded onto your fabric. So that further the soap is not able to make enter into the inside. So there is no interaction. If there is no interaction, we are not going to have any chance of cleaning the dirt. That's why the soap will be not preferable in the case of hard water when you are having. When you are going to have soft water, it's fine. The soaps can able to clean, but hard water can't be clean. If you are going for detergents. Detergents are also called as synthetic detergents or soapless detergents are called as synthetics. Are called as synthetics. These detergents are of three types: anionic detergents, cationic detergents. And non-ionic detergents. The detergents can be classified into three types. That is anionic detergent, cationic detergent, non-ionic detergents. How we are going to get anionic detergent? In this, the anion part will be larger. In this, the anion part will be larger. So that we are going to get anionic detergent. Say for example, we are taking lye alcohol. CH3, CH2, 10, CH2, OH. So this is laryl alcohol which is going to be reacting with your H2 SO4. It's going to lose this one and it is going to form CH3, CH2, 10 times CH2. SO3H is going to give SO3H 
it is called as laryl sulfate it is going to be called as laryl sulfate now this laryl sulfate is going to react with the sodium hydroxide and it is going to form ch3 ch2 10 times ch2 so3 minus na plus so it is called as sodium laryl sulfate or sodium dodecyl sulfate Call as sodium laryl sulfate or sodium dodecyl sulfate. So, which is going to be making the particular thing is detergent. So, this detergent is going to be making the particular cleansing action. So, this negatively formed ion is going to be present. That it is called as anionic detergent. It is going to be called as anionic detergent because it is going to have anionic part. The same anionic part we can able to make dodecyl benzene sulfonic acid. It is going to be dodecyl benzene sulfonic acid can also be comes under this one more anionic detergent. Sodium laryl sulfate or sodium dodecyl sulfate or we can able to use sodium benzyl sulfonic acid. That is also can be used as a detergent which is comes under anionic. So these anionic detergents are going to be cheaper they are going to be cheaper so that we can able to use that domestic purpose whatever the detergent they are using they are all comes under anionic detergents they are comes under anionic detergents Next one, when we are going to take so cationic detergents, the cationic detergents are going to be they are usually quaternary ammonium salts. They are going to be quaternary ammonium salts. Of chloride, bromide. Acetate. Anything can be present as an anionic part, but the cation is bigger now. So that's why they are going to be called as cationic detergents. So we are going to have cetyl alcohol. So that is going to be forming cetyl trimethyl ammonium. Now this is the cationic part. Here I can have bromide or chloride or acid, whatever it is going to be. So sodium, we are going to have cetyl trimethyl ammonium bromide or cetyl trimethyl ammonium chloride or cetyl trimethyl ammonium acetate. Anything can be used as cationic detergent. So these cationic detergents are very costlier. Their main purpose is going to be hair conditioners. They are going to be useful for the hair conditioning. Whenever they are having hair conditioners for the ladies when they are using, that is going to be because of cationic detergent that is going to be very costly. That is cation. And coming to the non-ionic detergent, the so non-ionic detergent is going to be polyethylene glycol. Plus stearic acid we can take. So we are going to take polyethylene glycol CH2CH2OH. So we are going to have polyethylene glycol, that is N number is going to be get added. We are going to have OH CH2 CH2 O is going to be repeating N times and we are going to have CH2 CH2. So this is going to be called as polyethylene glycol. So this polyethylene glycol is going to be reacting with a stearic acid. A stearic acid. So just I am writing here. So when it is going to be reacting with CH3, CH2, 16 times COOH. Now what is going to happen? In both the sides, we can able to get the 
detergents with one side alcohol. So I am writing the detergent here. CH3, CH2, 16 times COO. And now this mole is going to be combined and it is going to be continued as it is. CH2, CH2, more n times CH2, CH2, OH. It is not going to have any ion in it. So this is going to be acting as non-ionic detergent. So this non-ionic detergent, when you are going to take, they are acting like so. How the missile formation is taking place? That missile formation is going to be making how the cleaning or that can be cleaned. Those things can be taking place when you are going to take your detergent that is non-ionic detergents. Non-ionic detergents are going to be acting like the soap. How the soap is going to form the missile? I think everyone is going to be aware of that one. So how the soap is going to be making? So when we are going to have critical micellar concentration. What is critical micellar concentration? The minimum concentration which is required to form a missile is called as critical micellar concentration. So the concentration above which that missile formation is taking place. So when we are going to take this non-ionic detergent, this is also going to do the same thing like your soap. It is going to form the missile. They are going to be associated with one another and they are going to form a spherical shaped particles. They are called as missiles. Those missiles are going to be responsible for the cleaning the dirt. That is how this is going to be acting its action. That is what we are having in case of non-ionic detergents. Non-ionic detergents are going to be useful for the when you are going to take your washing machine, liquid detergents are there. That liquid detergents are made up of your non-ionic detergents. So these non-ionic detergents are going to be little bit more advantageous in cleaning the dirt and they are not going to cause any damage to your hand or your cloth. That's why right. they are going to be useful in liquid detergents what you are having. So that is the non-ionic detergents. So coming to the detergents, what we are having? We are having all of three types of detergents. That is anionic, cationic and non-ionic. So the anionic detergent is the one which is going to have anion in its structure. So that's why it is going to be called anionic. Whereas in cationic detergent, it is going to have cationic structure. It is called as cationic. Non-ionic means no ion. We are going to call them as non-ionic. For the coming for the purpose, we are going to take your anionic detergent is going to be useful for the household detergent. Whereas cationic detergent is going to be useful for hair conditioners. And when you are going to take non-ionic detergent, that is going to be useful in case of liquid wash detergents. That is what we are having. The role of this one. And compare to soaps and what is the advantage you are having for the detergents? What is the advantage you are having? The detergents even able to use in ice cold water or hot water or even we can able to use them in any type of water. So that is what we are going to have the advantage of detergents over the soap. So this is the purpose of cleansing when you are going to take. Detergents are mostly used compared to soaps because of detergents even clean in hard water. Why? Because here there is no chance of formation of your scum by calcium or magnesium. That's why there is no problem with them. And then we are having ice cold water also. The detergents can able to bring the cleansing activity. Whereas the soaps can't be able to bring that cleansing activity in ice cold water. And what is the disadvantage that have with these detergents are they are biodegradable, sorry, non-biodegradable. The detergents are non-biodegradable. That's why they can be accumulated in the earth where they are going to be get sinked. So that is the problem we are facing when the detergents are going to be used much and they are going to be flooded into the river bodies, then they will not be having the sufficient biodegradability for these so that they will be causing some water pollution or even your hand soil pollution can be caused by your detergents. That is why when we are going to take the advantage and the disadvantage we are having, soaps are going to be non-biodegradable, they are biodegradable and detergents are non-biodegradable. But cleansing purpose when you are taking, soaps are going to be cleaning only in soft water. When you are getting a detergent, they can able to clean 
in even hard water also. Soaps are filled in hard water and detergents can able to make in hard water also. So these are the things we are having in chemistry in everyday life. So all these things whatever we discussed they can come in exam. Every example you are supposed to remember it. That is in case of drugs we have discussed so many classes like antibiotics. We discussed antacids, we discussed antihistamines and then we discussed anti drugs, we discussed about disinfectant, antiseptic. So everything is going to be tabulized. Just prepare on tabular form. So this is the class, this is the example. This is the class, this is the example. Neurologically active drugs in that narcotic analysis and non-narcotic analysis. Everyone can prepare one table for your chemistry in everyday life so that it is easier to remember the exam. Why? Because the names what you are having that is only confusing. So this it has in if I give it, obviously you are going to get confusion where it is going to be. That's why make one tabular form everyone so that it is easy to buy heart. Then prepare the tabular form for food additives. What will be artificial sweetness we are having and how we are going to get the sweeter times. So 100 times aspartame and 550 times saccharin, 650 times sucralose and 2000 times halitin. That is the range of sweetness we are going to have. Just make, prepare one tabular form for this entire chemistry in life so that it will be easier for us to memorize so many examples what you are having. Similarly, we are having today discussed regarding toilet soap, what you are having the example and then what you are having transparent soap, what you are having shaving soap and what is going to be example for anionic detergent, cationic detergent and non-ionic detergent. So if you are able to prepare one table, so that it is going to be easier for us to remember. And next we are going to take the polymers and today it is the end of chemistry in everyday life. We are